there's a house up on Third Street on top of the hill. So if you go up Third Street and you go up to Seventh Avenue, right on top of that hill, on the corner there, there's an older house that has a kind of a big retaining wall. There's a tunnel that went from that house down the hill to that cave. And that, was, that was the office of the brewery. The house is right up next to the sidewalk. Is that right? Okay. There's a, a store study has a picture because somebody brought one in and then I had it. Uh, what's his name? Next door here. Made copies of that. So there are copies of the front. And that was where the Cop brewery books. had a. Because the site, there is no front yard there. Comes right up to the sidewalk. Yep. So that was the office for that. And then when Prohibition came about, they made uh, cement fence posts that they would use for like corner posts. Mm -hmm. And they made those where the then where the brewery was, which was back about where the A-frames, where, where that A-frame is, and what they would do is they would shoot those down as they made them, down into the caves, and then that's where they would cure, and that's where people could drive in, and, and, and those corner posts or fence posts, if you, instead of using steel posts, and uh, apparently there's still some of those around out in the mm -hmm. country somewhere. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but that's what they they did when prohibition came. Okay, huh. I heard a little bit about that from time to time. I knew that the tunnel was connected and all that. Uh, so as far as other, no, I, I I've never researched. I, I'm going to sometime, but I never have researched that that cave. Um, there was a pop factory. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue who started it. That was where Urban's was down. There was a pop, pop factory back in the day. And I don't know what kind of pop they sold, but it was a, it was a pop factory back in the 1890s or so. Um, what do you know about the horse thief caves? I know that that's where they got the, uh, yeah, I, I know, and there's been a lot of discussion about it, but <clears throat> I know I'm right. The original, <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but <laughs> there's been a lot of discussion about it. The original foundation for the Braille School, that's where that came out of. There's been other additions that it hasn't come out of that area, but that is where, that was Honks, and I don't know how to pronounce it, A-U-N-G-S-T something, and that was, he had that, that quarry there or whatever, and that's where they get made all the stone for the foundation of the original Braille School. And they could take it up the river when it was frozen to get it here. Uh, he had a big, huge kiln there that he would fire and uh, made lots and lots of building stone from there. Um, he ended up dying a horrible death. Uh, they had it, it's a, there's a big article in the paper about this huge kiln that he came up with and somehow they would drop the material on the top, had huge trays that once it got hot, you'd pull it out and it'd all dump into the fire and whatever would happen, it would, it would make all that block. And his sons worked with him and his son dumped in a bucket load of dirt by accident. And what happened was when he went to pull that out, that dirt dropped down in there, vaporized, became dust, you know, cloud, and enveloped him and just cooked him. And he lived for like a day or two, but eventually he eventually died. But that's how he died. It was, yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about the railroad, I mean, it was an awesome thing. You know, came through in 1870. Uh, the paper would vividly describe very specifically the injuries and all the horrible maimings, uh, the, the things that happened. You know the. There are actual stories of like, well, you can imagine wherever everybody lives, <clears throat> like your house, nice neighborhood. All of a sudden, within a year, there's a train that goes through your backyard, literally through your backyard. And people, some people didn't really care for that. You know, they had 30 to 40 trains a day back in the day going through your town. So there's constant trains. There's actual stories of mothers seeing their little kid crawling up onto the tracks, mm -hmm. hearing the locomotive, 
and running as fast as you can to try to grab the kid and not making it. And it's, it's just crazy. I mean, the stories are just crazy. I mean, they would describe exactly what happened. <laughs> it's just, just between all the mechanisms, all the belting, you know, they're all the, the grain operation down by the river with all the mills and up by the tracks, up by our shop. All the belting where somebody would get grabbed up in that belting and they would run around that thing and they'd lose arms and legs and yeah they it was crazy it was tough living back in the day it was tough living but uh, so that was the brewery a little bit i mean there they, i just get off the, the newspapers the, uh, the paper goes back to 1855 and you can just read the paper from 1855 and you it, everything everybody that was born or died Every church, every bridge, every street, everything that happened in town is in the paper, and that's why I love it because it's, it's as far as I can tell, pretty accurate. You know, very seldom do, you know. So it's, it's it's very interesting. I just love it. Down by the river where Reisenstahl's house is, you sit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was that a mill? Is that a mill? Yeah, there. Uh, oh, it shows it here. Yeah, it shows it here. Right here. Okay. Yep, that was Vinton's first mill. Uh, yeah, that was that was a mill. Because we, we did a little research when we were interested in Bill and Jane White's building over there. And yeah. Steve, I think, come up with the Young, Mr. Young. Yeah, Young, that's Young's mill, yep. Yeah, that, that is yeah. who then built the Bill and Jane's building, Nelson Furniture. Is that right? There's some connection. I know, I've, yeah. I know the story. Um, there's a picture of it being built. I know. Uh, we're trying to, for the 2019, not the Historical Society, but there's a, a group got together for the 2019 celebration. They're trying to come up with some history of the downtown businesses. And my part I'm trying to do is coming up with the original year it was built and what it was for. You know, uh, I'm not going to go all the way through time. That's that's a lot of a lot of work. Uh, but well, that's that's the part I'm going to try to do is try to get most of the buildings downtown, what their original use was and when they were built. Um, is there any, I mean, any, uh, let's see, uh, the bridges, you know, one time there was a, the original one was a, a toll in 1857, I think. Some local guys got together and made a toll bridge. People eventually said, why are we paying to go across the bridge? <laughs> They, they got tired of it, so uh, they sold it to the uh, county, and within a year, the county deemed it unsafe, so they put a new bridge in. That was in 1866, I believe it was, so it stood from 1857 to 1866, and it was, uh, the original bridge was right off of 2nd Avenue, 2nd Avenue behind the, 2nd Avenue, yeah, 2nd Avenue. That was the original bridge, so it went down to A Avenue, that was a wood bridge, and that was in 1866. And it lasted until 1877. It got washed out. So that's why in 1877 there was a new bridge. It was an iron bridge. And it cost like $30,000. It was huge. It had huge stone abutments. It was well made, very well made. But that's the reason why it went right back in the same spot was because it got washed away. You can't do that normally. You have to build somewhere else. So they originally went from 2nd Avenue to A Avenue. The third one was at A Avenue. The fourth one, 1935 was the one most people remember with the arches, which was on First Avenue, and then the current one is built right next to it. And there's pictures that show this one and the old one next to each other, and there are pictures that show the other one and the iron one. This picture here shows the uh, iron one that lasted until 1935. So yeah, they built one in 1877 that lasted until 1935. That's a very well-built bridge. This is our fifth bridge we've had. When it got washed out, they had to uh, put a rope one across there just so people could physically get across the river. And there's a story of a guy going across the rope bridge in the winter time. He had been drinking, fell off the bridge, and broke something on the ice down below. You know, he, there's all kinds of. But yeah, there's a rope bridge across there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> what are all these bottles you keep telling me about? Oh well. Rod Moore, him, him, he's familiar with Rod Moore, but uh, he's a local historian and he's a bottle collector. And uh, he goes around, especially the older houses, the brick ones up on East 5th Street, 4th Street, 6th Street, some of those old brick ones are very, very early, the 1850s even. 
and uh, he will dig up the outhouses. And what they did back in the day, they were supposed to dip them, which was clean them out. You have an outhouse, you're supposed to clean it out. Uh, but a lot of people did. They just dug another hole, moved the outhouse over. So some of those older places, like that one, he just did a while back, has like eight pits. And he can tell by looking and probing where they're at. And he digs them up and finds the bottles. And uh, he likes, uh, obviously, we're not looking for old whiskey bottles or anything that, you know, you're looking for uh, local, the doctors and the pharmacies and pharmacists and everything. And he has an extensive collection. And there's like three or four he knows exist. And a couple of them he has parts and pieces of, but he doesn't have the entire bottle. But he, he, it is amazing. He could sell tickets. He really could when he digs these up. It is so neat to watch. He pulls out a little green part of a bottle, just the top, just a little part of a bottle. And he can tell you exactly when it was made, who it was for, everything about it. I mean, he is just incredible. It's just so much fun to watch. But yeah, he digs them up because that's where the bottles went. You know, there was no garbage. So get a bottle, you throw them down there. Where Melissa Moser lives, which is at the north end of C Avenue, you're running right into her house, uh, that was a bottle dump. We talked to her and she, she does any sort of planting, digs a, digs a shovel in the ground, she hits a bottle. That's where, you know, everything was thrown in the river. I could have a whole thing on just the river. All the garbage was thrown in the river. They're romantic. Some of the neatest stories of Vincent back in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. Someone taking a boat trip to Vincent. And they talk about how beautiful the river is and everything else. And they'll say how beautiful Vincent is. It, it, it rises from the river and goes up on the hill. and Everything's beautiful. And then they'll say, except for the stink. You know, they, they throw all their garbage in the river and it stinks and it's horrible. And how could they do that, you know? But yeah, so all the, the, the river was just was a garbage dump. Uh, all the open, you know, sewers from downtown all went in there. All the sewage went in there. Uh, Cedar Rapids put an editorial in our paper saying, please, please, you have to get a sewer system put in at some point. We're tired, We're tired of dealing with it. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a minutes from the city council, uh, the Braille school, 